Mr. Robinson is a successful businessman. One morning, he had an insight. Later that day, he invited two of his best managers to his office to discuss this breakthrough. Which of these men is Mr. Robinson? It's the man on the right. His suit jacket is on the boss's chair. It's an animal. Take away its last letter, and you'll get a water body where this creature usually catches fish. What is it? It's a seal, which transforms into the sea. Tilda's mother has seven daughters. The names of her six daughters are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Can you guess the seventh daughter's name? That's right, it's Tilda. It begins and ends with E, but only has one letter. What is it? The right answer is an envelope. Mrs. Sally baked her favorite chocolate cookies for a charity fair. She left them on the kitchen table and went to the garden. When she came back, all the cookies had been eaten. Mrs. Sally got very angry and questioned her three children. Her eldest son, David, said he hadn't eaten the cookies because he had spent all day in the garden. Her middle daughter, Shelly, wiped some crumbs off her face and said she'd just eaten a sandwich. The youngest daughter, Sarah, said she didn't eat sweets because she was on a diet. Mrs. Sally knew exactly who was lying. Have you figured it out too? It was David. Mrs. Sally was in the garden when someone ate the cookies. If she had seen David there, he wouldn't be among the suspects. Look at the picture. Can you find the odd star? The star that's different is in the left corner. The middle of this star is smaller than that of the rest. Delivery guy Robert entered a jewelry store to pick up an expensive diamond necklace for his boss. Saleswoman Daphne took the necklace out of the safe and was about to pack it in a box. But suddenly, the lights went off in the entire store. When the lights turned on a couple of seconds later, the necklace was gone. The alarm went off and the store door slammed shut. But only Robert, Daphne, and one other customer called Vicky remained inside. The police came over and interrogated all of them. Robert said he hadn't seen anything. Daphne said she had felt someone push her in the dark. They must have taken the box. And Vicky claimed she had been choosing rings for her upcoming wedding in the opposite corner of the store. The detectives immediately understood who the robber was. What about you? Vicky stole the necklace. She's already wearing a wedding ring on her finger. Kitty was walking in the woods and got lost. At one point, she met a magic fox. The fox said, If you can solve my riddle, I'll help you find your way home. But if you don't, you'll turn into a fox and stay here with me. Uh oh. When you have it, you want to share it. But if you share it, you don't have it. What is it? Kitty returned home that night. What did she say to the fox? It's a secret. If you share a secret, you can't keep it anymore. Look at the picture. How many squares do you see? A, 10, B, 5, C, 3, D, 6. You're right, there are 10 squares. You're supposed to count all the colors. Stephen had a dream of becoming a successful geologist and traveling the world. That's why he took a very difficult test and answered all the questions correctly. 
Professor Smith said he had one final question for Stephen. If the guy answered it correctly, he'd go on an exciting mountain expedition the following week. Mount Everest was discovered in 1852, but what was the highest mountain in the world before that? The next week, Stephen was proudly walking in the mountains with his colleagues. What did he say to the professor? Stephen said it was Mount Everest. It was still the highest mountain in the world, even though it hadn't been discovered yet. Jenny worked as a cleaning lady at a museum. Once, she found a beautiful diamond ring on a sink while she was cleaning the ladies' room. Three people showed up to claim it. Tyler said he hadn't seen the ring after visiting the bathroom. He needed to get it back to propose to his girlfriend. Kelly showed Jenny a tan line on her finger and said it was her engagement ring. Leah just asked whether there was an engraving on the inside of the ring. Jenny decided that the ring belonged to Leah. Why? Kelly's tan line was on the wrong finger. Tyler wouldn't have been allowed into the ladies' room, and Leah was the only one who knew the ring had an engraving. Susie entered an elevator and pressed the seventh floor where she lived. Suddenly, the elevator got stuck between floors. Susie got anxious and hit the emergency button. The operator said, I'll restart the elevator, but first, you have to solve my riddle. What can you hold without touching it? He asked. One minute later, Susie was on her floor. What did she say to the operator? Breath. You can hold it without using your hands. It belongs to your friend, but you use it way more than them. What is it? That's right, it's your friend's name. Alice was walking in a field and suddenly saw a white rabbit. She took a picture of the animal. Suddenly, the rabbit said, Hey, I can show you where the treasures are hidden. Alice got very excited, but then her friend called her and the rabbit ran away. When Alice returned to the field the next day, she saw nine rabbits. They all kept silent. Can you help Alice find the right rabbit? It's over there, in the right corner. What substance is there in each mug? 1. It's not sugar or water. 2. It's not sugar or tea. 3. It's not tea or water. The first mug contains tea. The second mug contains water. And the third mug is full of sugar. Gemma overslept and arrived at her office an hour later than usual. She found a beautiful bouquet of roses on her table. Gemma got very excited when she saw a postcard tucked among the flowers. She reached for it and accidentally pricked her finger on a thorn. The card said the flowers were from a secret admirer. Gemma looked attentively at her three colleagues. Serge was on the phone. Will was printing out some documents. He winked at the girl, and Peter was making coffee. He offered Gemma to join him. At that moment, Gemma understood who had sent her the bouquet. How? It was Serge. He had a fresh scratch left by a thorn on his finger. Rotate it 90 degrees, and it's everything. Cut it in half, and it's nothing. What is it? When you cut 8 in half, it turns into two zeros. If you place it on the side, 8 turns into the infinity symbol. The more it dries, the wetter it gets. What is it? It's a towel. Tim loved his girlfriend Christy very much, 
so he went to a tattoo artist to get her name tattooed on his arm. But the artist turned out to be a crazy scientist. He used Tim's DNA to create two evil clones. When Christy came to the tattoo parlor to pick Tim up, she saw three identical guys. Help Christy uh -oh. determine which Tim is the real one. The guy on the left is the real Tim. He's the only one who has a tattoo. The clones aren't supposed to have any. How many months of the year have 28 days? All 12 months. Look at the picture. Which one is different? It's A. The color that should be at the top is at the bottom. Helen was a famous singer. When she was applying her makeup in the dressing room, her agent called her. He said that her song had become the main hit of the year. Helen told her assistant, Nick, hurry up, bring my best friend Lisa here. I want to celebrate. Nick came out of the dressing room and saw a crowd of fans in front of him. All of them wanted to get Helen's autograph. Nick asked, which one of you is Lisa? Each girl claimed she was Lisa. Help Nick to identify the real Lisa. The real Lisa is wearing a necklace with the left half of the heart on her neck. It matches the one Helen is wearing. Josh left his office earlier that day and decided to take a walk through the park. But suddenly, it started to rain. Unfortunately, Josh forgot his umbrella and hat at work. His clothes were soaked, but not a single hair on his head got wet. How did he do that? Josh was bald. Richard is a famous writer. On a Sunday morning, he finally finished his book and called his agent Stacy to share the good news. Stacy came to his house at 9 a.m. She found Richard unconscious on the floor. Oh, no. His laptop with the new book had disappeared. Stacy called the police. The detectives arrived immediately and questioned everyone who had been in the house. The nanny said she had driven Richard's son to school. The gardener said he'd had a day off and spent time with his family. The driver said he had taken Richard's car to a car wash. Once the detective listened to everyone's stories, they knew who was lying. How did they find out? The nanny was lying. She said she had taken Richard's sons to school. But schools are closed on Sundays. Tomas was washing a window on the 24th floor of a large office building. And suddenly, he heard someone screaming. The guy looked outside and saw a lady falling from the 30th floor. But in five minutes, the woman was standing on the ground, totally unharmed. How did she survive? Take a closer look at the sky. Yes, it's Superman. He saved the lady. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? Watermelons don't grow on palms. Twin brothers Stan and Ken had been working hard. They wanted to collect money for their mother's anniversary. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to save enough to buy her the car of her dreams. The brothers were very upset and agreed to go shopping the next day and pick another gift. At night, Ken couldn't fall asleep because he got a genius idea. While his twin was sleeping, Ken secretly took all their savings and headed to a casino. It was his lucky night. He tripled the sum. In the morning, Ken put all the money back in the box and fell asleep. Stan woke up, opened the box, and immediately realized that Ken had touched their savings. He didn't even need to count the money to understand that. How did Stan figure it out?
In the box, there were large and small bills in the evening, but now there are only large ones. Kelly was traveling and discovered a beautiful abandoned castle. She entered the building and went downstairs. She was taking pictures when someone locked her inside the basement. Kelly looked around and saw three tunnels leading to freedom. In the first tunnel, a huge hungry monster was waiting for her. The second tunnel was full of snakes. And the third tunnel was filled with sleeping gas. In five minutes, Kelly was outside the castle, running to the nearest police station. How did she escape? She used her headband as a mask and ran away through the third door. Look at these animals attentively. What's wrong with this picture? This little guy on the left is listening to music. Two sisters went on a hike. Each of them took a box of matches. Nellie put her matches in a bag together with toothpaste and Shelly decided to store her matches in a bag with nail polish. While the sisters were walking through the forest, they accidentally fell into a huge puddle. When they got out of it, Shelly suggested making a fire to dry their clothes and cook something to eat. Both sisters took out their matches. Unfortunately, Nellie's matches were covered in toothpaste and Shelly's were in nail polish. Both girls left the matches to dry in the sun and left to collect some firewood. It started raining and all the matches got soaked. But 10 minutes later, the sisters still managed to make a fire and toast some marshmallows. Whose matches did they use? They used Shelly's matches. The nail polish dried and made them waterproof. If you don't keep it, it'll break. What is it? It's a promise. Susan was asked to describe her sons. She said, they're all redheads but three, all blondes but three, all brunettes but three, and all pink haired but three. How many sons did Susan have? The answer is four. One redhead, one pink haired, one brunette, and one blonde. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to herself, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who had been around Lisa. The stylist said she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eating anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said she had been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. Look at the pictures. Which of these people is a risk taker? The girl is risking less. She's sitting on the second floor and there's a pool below. The guy is risking more. The building he's sitting on is taller. You can see clouds and planes in the sky. What food can you never cheer up? A blueberry, because it's always blue. Ha ha, okay, let's move on. There are five lemons in a bowl. You take away three of them. How many lemons do you have now? Well, you have the three lemons you took. King Gerald has a very beautiful daughter named Teresa. Four princes from different countries came to the kingdom, hoping to marry the girl. But the king decided to check how smart they were and organized a special contest. Teresa was in the center of a 200 by 200 foot room, and the princes were standing on small boxes in each corner of the room. 
the first prince to touch Teresa's hand would become her husband. But they weren't allowed to leave their places or use anything but their hands or wits. One of the princes figured out what to do immediately. He married the princess. What did he do? He just asked Teresa to come over and touched her hand. You can easily find me on Earth, Mars, Mercury, and even Jupiter. But you'll never find me on the Moon, Venus, or Pluto. What am I? I'm the letter R. Manager George received an anonymous text message. It said a robber had just entered the supermarket where he worked. George hurried into the hall and saw four pregnant women in the grocery section. The man looked at the ladies attentively, detected the thief, and called the police. How did he know? The woman on the right is the only one who doesn't have a shopping basket or cart. She's putting groceries inside her fake belly. Imagine that you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How can you get out? Eh, just stop imagining the room. Mrs. Victoria decided to give her grandson Rick an unusual gift for his 18th birthday. She called him into her room, showed the guy her safe, and handed him a corked bottle with a key inside. Honey, this is the key to my safe. You can keep all the money you find there if you manage to open it. But you must take the key out without removing the cork or breaking the bottle. Good luck. Rick accepted the challenge and started thinking about the puzzle. What would you do to get the key out? Push the cork into the bottle, and you'll easily get the key. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The lady's reflection is holding the bag in the wrong hand. Amy had a crush on her neighbor. She went to the local witch, Sally, to ask for her help. Sally said she would make a purple love potion. On the night of the full moon, Sally took a sheet of paper with her granny's love potion recipe. She mixed all the ingredients except for the last one. Suddenly, a gust of wind threw the recipe into the fireplace. Sally was desperate. She didn't remember the name of the last ingredient, but she still knew for sure that the potion should be purple. Help Sally finish her work. She should add the blue ingredient. When you mix blue and red, they make purple. Harry and three other video bloggers traveled to a creepy canyon. They wanted to make a video about this mysterious place. They had been filming all day long. In the evening, they gathered around the fire, but it started to rain and everyone went to sleep in their tents. In the morning, Harry woke up, left his tent, and headed to the big bag with food to grab something for breakfast. That's when he discovered that all the food was gone. Harry got angry. He woke everyone up and interrogated the members of his team. Fred said he'd been looking at the starry sky all night. Jane said she'd been trying to catch a Wi-Fi signal to have a video chat with her boyfriend. And Sam said he'd been sleeping. Who is lying? It's Fred. It was raining at night and he couldn't see any stars through the clouds. Two students, Betty and Sarah, went for a walk after a very stressful test. They bought some coffee and candies and began to look for a picturesque spot for a picnic in the park. But suddenly, a guy in a mask grabbed Betty's bag and ran away. Sarah and Betty followed him. At one point, they saw a blind man sitting on a bench. He was wearing glasses and had a cane. The girls asked him if he'd seen a person in a mask carrying a female bag. But the man said he couldn't have seen anyone because he was blind. Sarah got very embarrassed, handed him a candy, and thanked him for his help. Then the girl took Betty aside and whispered that the blind man was the robber. They needed to call the police. 
Betty was very surprised. Why did Sarah decide the man was the robber? If the man was indeed blind, he wouldn't have seen the candy. Will's mother has three sons, Fred, Peter, and... Will. It's Will's mother, after all. Two mothers and two daughters spent all day shopping, but they only bought six dresses. This was enough for each of them to have two dresses. How is that possible? Only three people went shopping. A mother, her daughter, and her daughter's daughter. One of them is a daughter and a mother at the same time. And each of the three purchased two new dresses. A young woman went to another town to look for a better job. She promised her mother she would come and visit her often. But four months passed, and she still didn't come home. Her mother missed her very much. One day, in the middle of winter, the woman shouted, April is here! How is it possible? April was her daughter's name. She finally came to visit her family. It's usually under you. Take away its first letter, and it'll be above you. Take away its first two letters, and you won't see it. What is it? It's a chair, which can transform into hair and air. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong with it. Why would this young lady put a pair of boots on the table and a saw in the fridge? How about this image? Does anything strike you as odd? There's a snowman in the oven and a fish in the toaster. Dennis, Maria, and Julie were at a party. They decided to play a game. There were five hats, two red ones, and three yellow ones. The friends closed their eyes, took random hats, and put them on their heads. Then they opened their eyes and looked at one another. Each of them had to guess what color the hat on their head was. Dennis and Julie said they didn't know, but Maria exclaimed that she knew the color of her hat. What color was it? It was yellow. Maria saw that Dennis and Julie were wearing red hats. And she knew there were only two of those. You can't share it until you take it. What is it? It's a photo. You see a combination of letters O-T-T-F-F-S-S. What should be the next three letters in the line? They should be E and T. These are the first letters of the names of the numbers from 1 to 10. Michael was walking along the street when a sealed envelope landed near his feet. The guy picked it up. Inside, there was a key and a note. It said, Help! 323. Michael entered the building. Soon, he found a door number 323 and used the key to open it. He saw a man near the open window. He was gagged and tied to a chair. Once free, the man exclaimed, Two men broke into my office, tied me up, and took all the money from my safe. Luckily, my hands were free. I managed to write this note and throw it together with the key out the window. Michael didn't believe the man and called the police. Why? The envelope was sealed. How could the man do it if he was gagged? It can never be thrown, but it can be caught. People are always looking for ways to lose it. What is it? It's a cold. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of the teams scored two goals in total. 
And still, it wasn't a tie. One team won, and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Young but very popular blogger Eric wrote his first book. It was a huge success. The guy was preparing for his first book signing. He was very excited and nervous. So he took a break to steady his nerves in a quiet corner. But even at 6 p.m., when the meeting was supposed to start, Eric was nowhere to be seen. In 10 minutes, a security guard found him lying on the floor in the bathroom. Someone had hit the writer on the head. The police had three suspects. Angela, his agent, said she had been solving some urgent organizational issues. Frank, one of the fans, said he had been a great lover of Eric's books for years. He wouldn't do anything to harm the writer. And Patrick, the security guard, said he had been doing his job, keeping the fans away from the entrance. Who hit Eric? It was Frank. It was Eric's first book. Frank couldn't possibly be reading his books for years. Look at these guys carefully. Who is a fake fireman? It's the guy on the right. He's not wearing a helmet and doesn't have a special bag. Plus, his pants aren't part of the uniform. You have three empty cups and ten sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups so that each of them contains an odd number of cubes. Put three sugar cubes in the first cup and three cubes in the second one. After that, put the remaining four cubes and the second cup in cup number three. Now, the first cup has three sugar cubes, and the second one has three sugar cubes too. As for the third cup, it has seven sugar cubes, four of its own and three in the second cup. Two roommates, Deborah and Rachel, were walking home after doing their weekly grocery shopping. Deborah kept complaining about how heavy her bags were. Then Rachel told her, I don't understand why you're upset. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice more bags than you do. And if I gave you one of mine, we would have the same number of bags. How many bags were the girls carrying? Rachel had seven bags, while Deborah was only carrying five bags. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of the moving vehicle. The bag and all of his money and documents were left inside. But Detective Black said the man was lying. How did he figure it out? If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Kenneth was starving. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry dog. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the pooch. She squatted down to attract the dog's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. There was no bridge over the stream, and still, the dog wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter, and the stream was frozen. A rich entrepreneur disappeared from his office. 
The only thing he left behind was a note with the numbers 6, 4, 9, 10, and 11, and a calendar. The police have five suspects, James, Kevin, Carol, Jason, and Laura. Who knows something about the man's disappearance? It's Jason. The numbers mean months of the year, and the first numbers of these months make up the culprit's name, J-A-S-O-N. Matthew bought a new smartphone and a phone case. He paid $310. The gadget cost $300 more than the case. How much did Matthew pay for the phone? He paid $305. Tony was hosting a party. Three hours after it started, several guests came up to the guy. They asked where they could charge their phones. Unfortunately, there was only one socket in Tony's house. The guy checked all the power strips he had. Help him figure out how many phones he can charge at a time. Tony can charge 8 phones. Look, one strip has its cord cut. The strip with one socket is literally useless. One of the strips doesn't have a cord whatsoever. Another has no hole for a plug. Plus, one socket on each of the two strips will be taken by the plugs from the others. A rich businessman called the police. When he arrived at his office in the morning, he remembered he had left a bunch of important documents in his safe at home. He sent his secretary, John, to bring them. But the guy called half an hour later. He said the safe was open. The documents were still inside, but all the money had disappeared. The police examined the businessman's home office. They tried to find some fingerprints. Nothing at all. The detective had three suspects. The secretary, the businessman's nephew, Mark, and the housekeeper. The secretary said he had called his boss as soon as he had seen the safe. Mark said, I opened the door for John. Then I went to my room and found out about the accident only after John called me. The housekeeper told the police she had been very busy with her chores and hadn't been to the office since the previous evening. Who took the money? It was the secretary. There were no fingerprints in the room, but John was there and definitely touched different things. If he hadn't been guilty, he wouldn't have wiped his fingerprints off. Can you find a dino that is different than the rest? Right, it's this one! Now, it was the snowiest winter in the last 30 years. One morning, local police officer Chris was patrolling the area. Suddenly, he noticed a suspicious young lady. She was walking towards the road and carrying two heavy bags. Chris asked her what was in the bags. The lady said she had broken up with her boyfriend and packed his stuff to get rid of it. But Chris knew for sure that she was a burglar. How? She got out of the house through the window. People don't do that when leaving their own homes. Noah was an alien on a mission to investigate human behavior on vacation. He landed near a popular sand beach in Malibu. Noah put on a special human-like costume and hid in the crowd. Special Agent Sam was sent to the beach to deal with his issue. Sam arrived and questioned people at the seaside. He warned them that aliens might look like humans. But no one seems to have noticed anything suspicious. Take a look at these vacationers. Which one of them is the alien? That's right, the guy on the left has four arms. Yeah, that's a clue. Agent Sam caught the alien, but Noah changed his appearance and managed to escape. Sam noticed a weird figure jumping inside a train. The man decided to stop the train to check all the passengers. Look at the picture attentively and help Sam find the alien. The old man in the right corner is the alien. He's holding a book upside down. Vicky was working on her laptop in a coffee shop. 
At one point, Vicky needed to go to the bathroom. She decided it'd be safe enough to leave her stuff unattended and headed to the bathroom. But when the girl returned, she found out that her backpack and her laptop were missing. Vicky ran outside and saw three elderly ladies with picnic baskets sitting in the park. The girl asked them if they had seen the thief, but all three of them assured her they hadn't noticed anyone. Ms. Green said she had just joined her friends. Ms. Smith was eating her sandwich and reading a newspaper, and Ms. Jackson was taking pictures of birds. Vicky called the police because she knew for sure who the thief was. How did she figure it out? Ms. Green stole Vicky's things. The red backpack strap is hanging out of her picnic basket. Paul stayed late at the library. When he finished studying, he headed home. As he was walking down the dark hallway, he heard a voice coming from the men's locker room. Paul noticed that someone had locked the door from the outside. Paul opened it and saw Tom. The guy had no idea who had locked him in. He went to the swimming pool, but it was closed that day, so he decided to go home. Suddenly, someone turned off the lights and locked him in. Paul promised to find the culprit. The next morning, he questioned his classmates. Courtney said she had been working on her project in the classroom. Josh said, I swam in the pool for a while and then went to play basketball. Bob was with Courtney, but he left earlier to celebrate his granny's birthday with his family. Paul understood who was lying right away. What about you? It was Josh. The day before, the swimming pool was closed. Andrew is a photographer. He was walking alone in the wilderness and met a puma. The guy was very lucky and managed to escape. But he found out that his filter water bottle opened when he was running away from the animal. Now he didn't have any water left. Some time passed and Andrew got very thirsty. He had three options. The first one was to drink from a salty lake. The second, to drink cactus juice. And the third option was to get water from a muddy stream. Help Andrew make the right choice. The third option is the least dangerous. You can't drink water from a salt lake, it won't quench your thirst. If Andrew drank cactus juice, he would get poisoned. But his filter bottle can easily clean muddy water. It has 13 hearts but no other organs. Ooh, what's the name of this creature? It's a deck of cards. What can you catch but never throw? A cold. A team of video bloggers headed to a famous haunted house to make a video about the mysteries hidden inside. When they arrived, they didn't see anything strange. The house didn't look creepy at all. The guys walked up to the building, but cameraman George turned around and refused to enter the house. His friends tried to convince him, but the guy insisted they should leave the area immediately. His friends ignored his warnings and entered the building. George was waiting for them in the street all night, but they never came out. Look at the picture and try to detect what was wrong with the house. Look at the ground. All footprints lead to the house, but there are no footprints leading away from the building. Ooh. I always run, but I never walk. I have a mouth, but I never talk. I have a head, but I never weep. What am I? That's right, I'm a river. Look at the picture. Can you spot a burglar? That's right, the thief is inside the house on the left, standing next to the window. One Saturday morning, two sisters, Jenny and Maya, played hide-and-seek at home. 
It was Jenny's turn to hide, and she decided to bring the game to the next level. So she got on her longboard, left the house, and hit the road. Maya counted to 100 and began looking for Jenny. She searched the entire house but didn't find her sister. The teenager started to worry. She went out to the street and decided to ask the neighbors. Alice said she had been mowing the lawn all morning and hadn't seen anyone. Derek said he had been woken up by the sound of longboard wheels. Lisa said she had been on a business trip and had just returned. But Maya knew for sure that one of her neighbors was lying. Who was it? Alice lied. Take a closer look. Her lawn isn't mowed. What letter of the alphabet is also an organ in the human body? It's the letter I. Ay ay ay. A princess escaped from a dragon who kept her in a tower. She was walking along a dark underground hall with a sand floor when suddenly she saw three tunnels. A fire was blazing inside the first tunnel. Toxic acid was dripping from the ceiling in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with venomous scorpions. Five minutes later, the princess got to the surface and ran through the forest toward her kingdom. Which tunnel did she choose? The first tunnel. She put out the flames with sand. Smart princess. I can be touched, but I can't be seen. What am I? The heart is the right answer. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The sign says, fresh meat. Mike woke up in the middle of the night because he had a nightmare. He looked around and realized he was trapped in a weird house. Mike searched the place and found four doors to freedom. But the first door led to space. Behind the second door, there was a giant magnifying glass. Anyone who stepped inside would be burned by the sun in no time. The third door was hiding a pride of hungry lions. And behind the fourth door, there was an ocean swarming with sharks. Help Mike choose the right door. It's the second one. Sun rays aren't dangerous at night, and Mike can easily walk through that door. A billionaire businesswoman, Nancy, arrived at the police station. She was very upset. She said that her daughter Diana had disappeared. The day before, Nancy told Diana she would no longer give her money if Diana didn't go back to college. They argued because the girl didn't want to work or study. After that, Diana went out to get some fresh air and disappeared. Later that night, Diana called Nancy from an unknown number. She said, Mom, I've been kidnapped. Three guys put a black bag over my face and pushed me into their car. They want $5 million. We're driving through a desert. The men are wearing bunny costumes. The detective told Nancy not to worry. Diana staged her own kidnapping to get the money. How did he understand it? If Diana had had a black bag over her head, she wouldn't have seen the men's costumes or the desert. 